This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of IAC Delaware. Just recap what has happened here. The Bible verse talks about how they came to Jesus, and, and it starts off in the very beginning when he had heard it, he departed. And the question is, what did Jesus hear that he left? The news that he heard was that his dearly beloved cousin. John the baptizer, John the forerunner, John had been captured, imprisoned. He already knew he was in prison, but when the news came that he was murdered, that he was executed, it shook even Jesus. And I'll ask you uh, a question, have you ever got news that just shook you. And it just, uh, you weren't expecting it. You knew somebody may have been going through some things, but when you found out, they were gone. It shook you. We're not alone. You're not alone. Jesus himself felt that very same pain. But as he, the Bible says, he himself had to take away and just get a moment. So if you ever lose someone, if you ever have tragic news, Jesus himself took a moment to get away. But I find it interesting that um, while he's away, there were 5,000 plus people still looking for Jesus. Now he could have hidden himself far away so that he could not be found. But thank God, Jesus always makes himself available to be found. Amen. No matter how far you may have gone, no matter how far you may have strayed away, Jesus makes himself available for you, even when he's trying to get some quiet time. So like the good father, he is. He had compassion on them. He healed them. He prayed for them. He blessed them. They came in droves. And so they were there for so long that his disciples said, okay, thank you for coming, but the master needs his rest. It's time to go home. And so they begin to say, "What well, we're hungry. And so like anyone else would say, if we can just be real, well, go get some food. <laughs> it's time to go. But Jesus says something differently. Jesus says, don't send them home. Jesus tells them, his 12 disciples, to feed this multitude of people. 5,000 people. Just men, not including the women and the children. Can you imagine if, now this sanctuary seats 200. I can't imagine 200 people in here, and then if we had the overflow and the, and the, the fellowship hall, probably another 100 or so, 150. So if 350 people came expecting to be fed, and we had nothing prepared. This was, the, this was the dilemma that the disciples were in. But as I mentioned before, just rewinding of the tape a little bit about the praise team singing songs of expectation. Expect the great. I'm expecting great things. These people drove and rode for miles out into the desert looking to find Jesus because they were expecting something. They were expecting to be healed. 
They were expecting to be encouraged, to be enlifted, uplifted, and they were expecting to be fed. They came with nothing, expecting to get something. Very much like ourselves. We come to the Lord with literally nothing but expecting salvation. We had nothing to give but just our filthy rags. We had nothing to offer. We had nothing to bargain, not, nothing to barter for, nothing of worth. All we had was just our life. And some of our lives, yeah, we may look good now, but the lives that we had from our past, well, we, we, that's all we had to offer. And Jesus did not turn us away. Jesus did not turn them away. Jesus said, come on, come on. And he healed them. Some of us have emotional healing. Some of us need physical healing. Some of us need spiritual healing. And Jesus is saying, come on, come on. And then he healed them. And then after he healed them, he began to teach them and talk to them and encourage them. And then, like a good father, he wanted to make sure they had something to eat. But the interesting thing about this feeding situation, the arrangements, is that nobody had brought food. Nobody. Uh, except for one, somebody, somebody was a good Boy Scout and was prepared. <laughs> Sometimes uh, we can be like the, the, the five virgins, the five were wise, five were foolish, the ten, and um, the five were prepared. The other five were not. We don't want to be the unprepared. But sometimes things just happen, and we're, we're caught unprepared, aren't we? This is what happened here. Jesus said to them, he said, the disciples came to them, came to Jesus. Jesus, the people are hungry, and we want to send them home. Okay, that was their answer. Get rid of the problem. <laughs> Jesus, his answer was, no, feed them. Feed the problem. Feed, don't, don't push away what you can't handle anymore, what you don't want to be bothered with. There are people that, come, that will come in our lives, there are people that come in this ministry that, hey, I don't want your problems. We like you ha being in the crowd. We like what you bring, but don't bring your problems to us. Jesus is saying, no, that, that's not how I operate. No, no, no. Y yes, we're glad that you're here. Thank you for coming. Praise the Lord. You listened. All right, now I'm going to bless you. Jesus was trying to teach the disciples a lesson. He was grooming them to be leaders. He was grooming them to be leaders. Now, when I say that, is that because um, they came to Jesus, uh, of, they were followers at the time. The disciples, they were Jesus' followers, but God was preparing them to be leaders once he left this earth and put them in charge of, of the church. And so God said to them, feed them. Now, they came to him as followers. Followers will always see a problem and look for someone else to fix it. They came to Jesus. There's a problem. Hey, we got a problem here. Well, take it to Jesus. Let Jesus fix it. Because Jesus was their leader. And Jesus said, no, you fix it. Now, wait a minute. Wait, well, hold, now, I'm sure they probably got beside themselves. Like, <laughs> now, hold up, Jay. <laughs> if I can be real with you, Master. <laughs> um, we, we, we ain't got no money. We, we ain't prepared. Um, you know, I, ha had I known, had you let me know we were going to be, we were going to do this, when we loaded up on that boat to follow you out here, we would have loaded up with some good food. But we didn't know about that. So followers see a problem and look for someone else to fix it. If you're writing this down, that's a good point. Followers see a problem and look for someone else to fix it. Leaders identify a problem. Not only do they see it, but they identify it. They know what it is. They, they find out 
to identify it, to put a name on it, okay? So, so they know exactly what it is, and a leader seeks and finds the solution to fix it. So again, followers see a problem and look for someone else to fix it. Leaders identify a problem and will seek and find the solution to fix it themselves. Or either incorporate others to fix it. So, what's in your hand? The disciples were saying, I've got nothing. Jesus is saying, fix the problem. If they're hungry, feed them. Well, what are we going to feed them with what? I've got no money, I've got no food. What do I have? I've got nothing. So, Jesus is saying, feed them. So what do we do when we're tasked to do something and we look just around us and we don't quite see it? That's when God tells us to look harder. Look deep. <laughs> look, find what's in you, what's around you. What's around, what do you have in your hand, Moses, that you are discarding? All I got is this stick. Well, use it. How am I going to use it? Well, let me show you. What you have in your hand is greater than what you think it is. Samson was surrounded by thousands of Philistines. He had no weapon, so he thought. He didn't have a sword. He didn't have a shield. He didn't have a javelin, but he found a jawbone of an ass. He found something that looks like nothing and made something out of it, made greatness out of it. So what's in your hand? You may say, I've got nothing. Seek what's hidden inside of you. God, as I told you all on two weeks ago in Bible class, the things you need to succeed, God has already placed inside of you. When man wanted to sit down, the chairs that we're sitting on right now, they didn't go to God and say, God, we need a rest. We need to sit down. God said, I've already given you everything you need. I've given you the tree. Make a chair out of the tree. Don't you realize every, now right now I'm using this iPad here. Everything that this iPad is made out of and everything that it uses, it uses, it transmits and it receives wirelessly through the internet. That has been here, every material, everything that makes us up, has been here since the beginning of time. Nothing here is new under the sun. It means it's been here. So what have we been discarding and saying that's nothing? I'm reminded of, of the story of the, of, the, of, of the person that went digging for, to, 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 to find water. Digging. And every time he would dig and dig and dig and get deep, he would get deep and he would find this black sludge. And he was like, this is worthless. Oh, he would leave, get frustrated. Go, go a couple miles over and dig again. Find this other black sludge. What is this? It's a mess. It gets all over you, it sticks in you, it gets underneath your nails. It is just a mess. He didn't realize he was discarding crude oil. So what are you looking for? You're, 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 in, you're in a situation looking for God to bless you and, and, and do something. And God, I need a miracle. I'm expecting great things. And the great thing, the greatness is inside of you. God wants to use you to do the great things. Come on, clap your hands together. So I, I think it's interesting that uh, it says, uh, my notes, it says, look for what God has already given you and rest in it. Amen. So what do you mean by that, Pastor Carney? They were in a remote area. The King James Version says it was a desert. And God tells them, tells the people specifically to sit down on the grass now, if you think about this, there's not too much grass in the desert. But somehow there was just enough. You may have had to go over a little over, oh, some may have had to go over here, some may have had to go back here, but there was just enough for them to sit down 
on grass. Sometimes God will place an oasis of a blessing in a place in your life at an appointed time. You don't know how it got there. It might even be a memory. You have to go back and just say, God, I remember when. And I'm going to rejoice in it. And God is saying, rest down on that memory you have. Rest down. Sit down and, and bless the Lord. Give him praise. Thank him for his goodness. Relax in, the, in your past blessings. Has God ever done something for someone? Just think back when, no, you know you knew it was God. No one else could have done that for you. That special door that was opened up, that special blessing that you had, that special phone call that you had, that, that special time, whatever it is that you knew, you know only God could have done that. God is saying, sit down on it. Relax, because I'm getting ready to do another greater work in your life. So, Jesus tells them, look amongst you, go look, find what you are discarding. You, you, you don't think anybody has something. Often we will say, even as leaders, well, I don't have anybody on my team. I don't have anybody that, that, that feels the way I do, or I, I, you know, it feels like I'm pouring out the entire time. And God is saying, you are discarding what you have. It may be, as, 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 in your mind, as insignificant as two fish and five loaves. What are we going to do with that for 5,000 people plus? You know, it's, a, it's something we used to say, you know, I remember my mother would say, that's just enough to make you mad. Just a swallow in the container. You get your mouth all set to get some orange juice. <laughs> it's just a swallow left. <laughs> Somebody got that. <laughs> Amen. But it was just enough to make them mad. And they're thinking, Lord, what are we going to do with this? And God said, take what you have and bring it to me. Take, if you write this down, write this down. Take what you have, as little as it is, and give it to him. Hallelujah. It may not be what you think you need, the amount that you need. It may not look like everyone else's. You may look a fool bringing your one penny to the Lord. But God is saying, take what you have and bring it to him. The God we serve has a way of taking nothing and making everything. So just imagine if you have a little bit of something, what he can do. If he took nothing and made everything, imagine what he can do with a little something. So he took, he said, bring it to me. So here they go. Bringing two fish and five loaves to Jesus. Now, they had to search in this crowd. And everybody's talking. They're telling everybody, sit down. We're going to feed you. Sit down over here. Sit down over there. We're going to feed you. We're going to feed you. Does anybody have any food? <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> That's like, just imagine you going to, to Applebee's. You're coming to eat, and Applebee's saying, you got any food so we can cook for you in the kitchen? That's basically what happened. They began to ask what the people had. See, they had a work they were going to do. So this is why we can all participate. We got a work to do in the kingdom. You know, they were looking for Jesus to do everything, but they didn't know that the miracle was going to come, not from the disciples, but from within them. We want the ministry to go. It goes from with you. It starts with you. It starts with all of us. So they asked them, anybody got any food? Somebody raised their hand. I got a loaf. Someone else, I got a loaf. I got fish over here. So, so here they come. Now, imagine, here they come 
with one little basket, or maybe two, you know, get the fish and the bread. Here they are walking through the crowd, walking through the multitude. <laughs> and you know how we think. Now, I know you got to be kidding me. <laughs> it, 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 you bringing this? Man, stop playing. I came all the way out here. And this is what, uh, and no, 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 no. Sometimes people will discard what you are bringing. They will think, well, what you going to do with that? I'm reminded of our good friend, uh, Minister Michael, my sister's musician. We had a, a concert or, or uh, an event where we were going to uh, sing, and, and we had um, equipment uh, function, uh, malfunctions, and, and we didn't have our normal equipment that we bring. We normally bring top-grade stuff, but it was being repaired. And so all we had, we had to rent uh, a little PA speaker for the keyboard, uh, a, a PV at that. <laughs> and, uh, and so in this little bitty PV, and, and we, we were, because this isn't something that even, when I went to the place to rent it, Elder, they even said, no, all of our other good stuff is rented. But and they, they went in the back and they <laughs> found this. <laughs> you can use this. But see, I was in a bind, said to Chelsea. I was in a bind. When you're in a bind, you're desperate, you don't care. I'm going to use it for the glory of the Lord. So we took this PV, and Michael, he had a little mini, uh, a MIDI keyboard about the size of this iPad, actually. <laughs> it was, and so, and, and, and he had that, and he had his little laptop. So we come rolling in this place. She is the main event speaker now, the main event artist. And now normally when we rolled up, we rolled up like big time. We'd have a trailer, we'd have things, equipment. But this time, we, we, we came in like we were on the Chitlin circuit. <laughs> so we come rolling in here with this, this little bitty stuff. Now mind you, on the stage, there was this other musician. He had his gear all set up, all stacked up. And, he had, you know, good stuff, the stuff we would normally bring. And so we had asked him, do you mind if we were to, and he, no, no, because I got it set for me and how I need it. And, and, and I mean, really, brother, said no. We, we can't, and he wasn't playing it at the time. It was just sitting there. So he said, no, it's... Uh, so I can go somewhere with that, but, uh, but I said, well, you let yourself sit, sit, that's fine, let it sit. So Brother Michael comes up, they, they announce Lady A in consecrated praise. Now mind you, we have very little stuff. We even bought a little mini bongo set. <laughs> it looks so silly. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, I mean, this is what, sometimes you show up and you have to give a disclaimer. Now this ain't how it normally rolls. <laughs> See, what had happened was <laughs> our last gig, we, we blew everything up. We, we tore the house down, so we had to get it repaired. <laughs> so we come up to this thing, to this concert, to this event, and Michael takes his raggedy old, it had to be from the 70s, PV speaker, plugs it up, plugs up his keyboard, and connects his keyboard to the laptop. Now, mind you, like I said, this keyboard was about this size. I kid you not. Michael, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When you connect with the Lord, when the anointing is upon you, the, the song says the blessing is upon you. When the Lord's blessing, the blessing of the Lord is on your life. David said, no matter what, whatever you put your hands to, you will prosper. Michael gets on this little keyboard, this little mini itty bitty keyboard, this broke sound system. But the anointing has a way of this changing everything. He gets on that thing, the anointing falls, the, the singer, Lady A, begins to sing, 
the, the people were slain in the spirit. From this little itty bitty piece of equipment, people discarded. Even the other musician who said no, he had to get off his perch and look over like, what you doing is coming out of this? People will look at you funny when you bring what you have. So for those of you that are bringing less what others are, look smaller in other people's eyes, you go with your head up. Because the master asks for what you have. So they begin to bring this to the master. So I will say, whatever it is that you put your hands to, hold your head up high. Walk up straight. You know, they're going to talk smack about you. What are you going to do with that two fish or five loaves of bread? You expect to feed all of us? Ignore the naysayers. And go on to Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm ignoring the naysayers. And I'm going on to Jesus. Pastor Carney, I hear you on the Now Network. What do you got? What kind of equipment do you got? Well, I'll tell you. I got four or five iPhones and about three, three, four iPads. They look at you funny. They say, well... To do what? To do a broadcast? It's what I have in my hand, Moses. What you gonna do against these 5,000 soldiers, Samson? I'm gonna fight, and I'm gonna win. What are you gonna do with with that that little itty bitty broadcast equipment you got, Pastor Carney? I'm gonna preach, I'm gonna teach, and we're gonna win. We're going to go and preach the untold to the unreached. We're going to go to the far ends of the world, and we're going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. People are going to hear the name of Jesus and how it heals and how it changes all through something you discarded. All because God said, go! Hallelujah. Are you with me today? Come on, put your hands together. God first, he called them. When he calls you, he's calling you to come to him. And he wants you to come to him so he can do what? Lay his hands on you. We pray that you enjoyed today's program. Feel free to connect with us by downloading the IAC Delaware app. There, you can watch services, send prayer requests, study the in-app Bible, and much more. Your partnership makes this ministry possible. Your faithful and consistent monthly support allows us to spread the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the world. If you would like to become a partner, simply log on to IACDelaware.com or text IACDelaware to 77977.